Well, hello and welcome to the following on podcast on Talk Sport 2. England, as you've just heard live and exclusively, have absolutely walloped India, beating them by eight wickets on home soil. England winning the toss, deciding to bowl first and uh, immediately had India in all sorts of trouble. 20 for three with Kohli gone for a a duck. Uh, We've seen that in this uh, series so far. And if it wasn't for Shreyas Iyer, 67, his top score in T20s, it could have been over a lot earlier than it was. Three wickets for Jofra Archer, Adar Rashid bowling the first over. Uh, all the bowlers getting involved and uh, five of them coming away with wickets and a score of 125. That was a target, never in doubt, once Butler and Roy put on 72 for the first wicket. Plenty to discuss on following on with myself, John Norman, uh, Darren Goff, Alex Tudor and... Matt Pryor as England win the first of five T20s against India. Well, let's go back to the start, guys. I think, uh, Matt Pryor, it was you who said uh, that you need to get off to a good start. Goffey was saying you need to target. um, And certainly, um, as we look back in hindsight, you were right. There was no coming back from India. Six overs on 22 for three. I mean, they, they required something miraculous. But if you're 22 for three after six overs, you'd have to say... Um, it's going to go your way, what, two times out of ten? Yeah, it's a long way back from there, isn't it? We always talk about the power plays, the first six overs, attacking those first six overs. Again, you know, a lot has been said about Owen Morgan's captaincy, but, I mean, he, he shocked all of us sat here. Suddenly we're like, okay, who's going to open? We got Archer, we got Wood, going to bowl 90 mile an hour. And, that, and it's a deal, Rashid. We spoke about the Indian batsman being so good against playing spin, but the captain has backed his man. But then it's over to a deal. He has to then, he's the man with the ball and Goffey, you know, choose, you know, stood at the top of your mark. You've then got to execute that plan and, and there was a lot of pressure on Adil Rashid. We've spoken about not being picked up in the IPL. You're in India, you're in the heart of 2020 cricket and you've got a big job to do and, and he did it. For, for me, Adil Rashid was the pick of the bowlers. Uh, yes, Wood bowled fantastically, bowled fast, bowled accurate, Archer, but with the pressure, taking the new ball, a role he hasn't, we've not seen him do, you know, I, well, ever, I think. Um, and and to to then accomplish it as he did was was just fantastic. Um, and now gives Owen Morgan another option, which is which is awesome for this England team. Goffey, I mean you've you've played with you've captained Adil, and um, give us an idea of when he would have found out he was going to be bowling that first over. Well, I think they would have had plans. I think uh, it's obviously a plan they've discussed with only playing one spinner. And I think it shocked everyone. Um, if you'd have had two spinners in your side, I think Moeen Ali would have played. If Moeen would have bowled the first over, I think we've seen that on a few occasions, haven't we? We'd have expected it. But he's decided, but it, it is a thing they do now in T20 cricket around the world where a spinner takes that first over. We've even seen it in the Legends tournament where the old boys, 45 and 50-year-olds, <laughs> are opening with a spinner. So it's something that goes on in world cricket now. We expect it. But with Rashid, I think... Knowing him as an individual, when he would have first gone to him, it would have been, really? <laughs> what, you want me to open the bowling with a white ball, brand new white ball? But as he could say, when you've got a captain, and I think Owen Morgan trusts him, and I think that's the most important thing here. Throughout his whole career, Rashid's talked about the times when Owen Morgan has believed in him, believed in his bowling. When he needs a wicket, he brings Rashid on, and he's captained him really, really well in 50-over cricket. And now to give him the new ball, Matt's right, it gives them another option when they do play two spinners, but Rashid could open the ball in, or Moeen Ali, depends who's batting. Uh, variety, that's, that, that's the buzzword, isn't it? In and around all cricket, not just uh, T20, but when you throw the ball to Adil Rashid uh, for the first over, and then you've got Jofra Archer to bowl the second, well, there's riches there, isn't there? And, and a wicket maiden as well, Alex Tudor. Um, and really, England got on top, and they got on top early, and they kept their foot pretty much on India uh, all the way through that innings. But uh, that uh, over by Archer, which also saw the wicket, wicket maiden um, of Rahul, it just it just set the tone from the outset. Yeah, it did. And, um, you know, Goffey did it in his career where you're bowling that first over and the captain throws it to that person because they want him to set the tone. That's what deal did. And then we all know what Archer delivers in, in, in white ball cricket, especially in 2020. And we always knew that the pace was going to be up. Because 
when Matt and I were talking at the beginning is that clarity. He has that. He knows what his job is in that format of the game, and he and he delivers more often than not in T Twenty cricket. And um, it's good to see. I, I was really excited. He, he's he's a cricketer that excites me. I was excited about Mark Wood, and and sometimes, uh, you know, for someone that has played and, and whatever, I, I just get a feeling, I just know when the guys were on it and they were on it from ball one and they were all on it in the field and then when we came out to bat, the boys just had purpose and they went about their business really well tonight. Yeah, and how difficult is it? I mean, you look at the side that England played today, one change from the last time they played the T20, but that doesn't really, that doesn't really um, tell the story because Jason Roy, uh, Joss Butler, Darwin Milan, um, Owen Morgan, Sam Curran, uh, Chris Jordan and Adil Rashid and Mark Wood, they haven't played much cricket recently, so they're really coming into this game cold. Oh, they are, but they're, yeah. but they're also fresh. And mm. these guys now, um, they, they did their um, little bits of um, isolation, which they had to do when they got to India. They've had quite a few days, though, to practice since they've been there. They, they, I think they've been there nearly, what, 10 days, two weeks? So they've had plenty of opportunity to practice. These are all terrific cricketers now. So the way they go about it these days, it's not like having four or five practice games like they used to do in the old days. They're into places, they play the games, and then they go into the next. That's the way they go about it. But they look pretty fresh to me. And as I said, England played their best 11. India experimented. And if they're going to beat this England team in this series, they're going to have to get that act together pretty quickly. India rested Rohit Sharma. He won't play in the second T20, as, as you say. Four changes for India from the side that last played a T20 uh, against Australia uh, in November, end of November, beginning of December. And uh, we're expecting a close series, aren't we? But they're going to have to improve, and they will improve. Um, what changes do you think that they will, they will look at, uh, India, ahead of that second uh, T20, Goffey? Well, I mean, the players they're going to be missing that are going to be playing in their World T20 finals are going to be Rohit Sharma at the top. He's a massive loss. What a player he is. He, when he gets score, he gets a score. He gets a big score and he gets it pretty quickly. Yeah, they've got Bumrah, who obviously is the best T20 bowler in the world for me. Uh, the way he bowls at the top and the way he bowls at the death. Then they've got Jadeja. I mean, how good is he? Um, they've got Jadeja to come back in. I mean, they could play Mohamed Shami, uh, whether he plays a part. Uh, I was pressed by uh, Siraj as well uh, in the Test Series. He's a fantastic one-day bowler. He's got, he's got a good record in the IPL. So they've got plenty of uh, options, but it looks like in this series, he's going to switch it around a little bit. He's going to have a look at some of the young players. They've picked a massive, massive squad. And as I thought, they're not that bothered about this series. For them, it's all about October. For England, they seem obsessed with picking their best 11 to win this series. And it's all about this series. Although they think it's important to get off to a winning start here as preparation for next October, I well, this October. I suppose the big difference is, is that England won't be playing any more T20 cricket in India. So they need to make sure they have their team right. India, of course, will have home series between now and then, so they can afford yeah. to tinker. Uh, one batsman that really stood out, I mean, we were watching the first innings and there was a real feeling it was a two-paced pitch. And indeed, during the mid-innings break, Shreyas Iyer, who top scored with 67, last man out, uh, he'd said uh, the ball wasn't coming onto the bat as they expected it would. And uh, when you look at many of the, uh, the dismissals, from Rahul, uh, who inside edged onto his own uh, stumps. Kohli, who clothed one to mid-off, as, uh, as Goffey described. A horrible hack from Darwan. Um, Panja as well, just smashing the ball to mid-off. Uh, Pant actually timed it beautifully straight to Johnny Bairstow uh, in the deep on the leg side. But Shreyas Iyer was different. He played differently today. He played properly, didn't he? Some of those cover drives, some of those deft touches, the use of the wrists. He took the aerial... Uh, game out of his own game and actually showed a different way to play on that pitch and showed that you could score runs. Yeah, definitely. He adjusted his game. I think one of the hardest things to do on a pitch that is slightly too paced. And I think England had the best of the facilities because the dew came down and the pitch, I think, just flattened out a bit. But it's very hard to attack a ball when you attack a ball coming down at you when you don't quite know how it's going to bounce and how it's going to come off the pitch. So if you keep, particularly if you're going to go aerial. Um, it's it's high high risk and, and as you say you saw you know a lot of the Indian batsmen clothing the ball hitting it up in the air and getting caught or swinging across the line and getting bowled um, and Ayer didn't do that he played proper cricket shots and he still managed to score at 
what was it, 140 runs um, per per hundred, um, which which was incredible. He got his timing, took it took his time to to get to read the wicket, and I think that was that was really really important. But I think the Indian dismissals, you can look at. I think this this type of pitch, you look at the dismissals and you go terrible shot. But it actually, is the deliveries before the actual dismissal that that made that you know you look at Kohli for instance that that ball that reared up from Archer a couple of deliveries beforehand you suddenly you see them looking at the wicket okay how am I going to score here I'm going to have to do something ridiculous and you know Kohli tried to step away and hit one over over mid off and, and clothed it obviously and so it's actually the the balls beforehand that, that that you look at from a batting perspective but yeah Shrey that that's exactly what he did he, he sort of you know, read the read the situation as I say. Played proper cricket shots. That's what's so fantastic about 2020. You can see someone, Rishad Pant, you know, <laughs> reverse flipping Archer at 90 miles an hour over the keeper's head. But actually, there's still a place for a nicely timed cover drive or straight drive, and um, that's what Aya did today. When England came into bat, of course, the pressure that had been on the India batsmen, especially when they were reduced to uh, the score that we mentioned after. Six overs. Well, it wasn't really there from a team perspective. But, of course, Jason Roy has come in and there is pressure. There's always pressure. You guys have played the game. You know that every single time you go out there, your performance is very easily judged by looking at the scorecard at the time and the day after. There's no escaping from the fact whether you've got a fifer um, or you're out for a duck. But Roy has gone out there. There's all this chat about Hales. Um, and there's all this chat about uh, uh, the top of the order being the best place to bat. And he's come out and essentially, going back to a point you were making, Matt, the captain is very clear on Jason Roy and all the players' role. It doesn't matter how long you're out there, while you're out there, you score quickly. And it was good to see that Jason Roy got out there and he didn't try and play his way into form. He didn't play out some dots. He just went for it. And uh, he walked off the field with 49. Well, you can imagine, we've spoken a lot about Adil Rashid, and you can imagine what Owen Morgan would have said to him. He would have gone up to Adil and said, I want you to open the bowling. Adil would have looked at him going, what? And, and, and Morgan, I guarantee you, would have said, well, what's the worst that can happen? You can go for 10, 15, off and over, and that's fine. Not a problem. But I'm backing you that you won't do that. And he would have said exactly the same thing to Jason Roy. Right, Jace, how are you feeling? Oh, Skip, not feeling so great, not hitting it so well. All right, mate, well, what are you going to do about this? You're going to go out and you're going to attack. From ball one, you're going to do what you're going to do because that is the game you play. What I don't want to see you doing is nicking and nudging and nerdling around and trying to find some form. That's not you. That's not Jason Roy. You go out and you smack it. And that's exactly, that's exactly what he did. You know, and he, and he, played, he played to his areas. He played to his strengths. And... There he is, you know, 49 runs. Shame he couldn't get, you know, get to the 50, but 49 runs. Um, and, yeah, he's a form player. Uh, an irony, that's uh, how Matt described it, uh, Goffey, that both Butler and Roy, when they were dismissed, they were dismissed playing defensive shots, both LBW. <laughs> well, it's been, LBW has been the dismissal of the series, hasn't it, um, throughout the Test Series. The straight ball seems to do these players, but... I think Jason Roy, is a, it's, it's, it's a big innings for him. And I think what I like about Jason Roy is, as, as Matt just said, when he goes on a run of not getting many runs, he still goes out and plays for the team and plays his way. And that's special. That's a special talent. And that's why he's so important to this England team. You can always back him to go out, not be selfish, and play for the team. And when he gets on a run... He wins you tournaments. He wins you matches. He's a terrific player uh, in this England team. And that's why he's so important for them moving forward. Uh, Alex, going back to look at that bowling scorecard. uh, Six bowlers used by England. Only Archer, who took three for 23. Jordan, uh, one for 27. And Wood, uh, one for 20, bowled out. Um, there is a feeling that this is England's best team. You know, nine or ten players. They'll uh, bring in one or two as we go. But are they... Are they still experimenting? I mean, how important is it that Owen Morgan can rely on Ben Stokes, for instance, to bowl three or four overs in an innings? It just makes the captain's job a lot easier. We all know the quality that Ben possesses, and if he's able to bowl some overs, it's going to help any side. So that is massive for a captain, Owen Morgan, if he knows that you know, he can throw the ball to Stokes in physically. He's able to do it. We know he gives it absolutely everything and everything he does on a cricket field. And if he's fit, it just helps that bowling lineup, as you said. You know, a deal bowled extremely well. He only he bowled three overs, you know. And then obviously he's got options with Sam Curran. Is it swinging? You know, he's got the option of bringing him coming round the wicket, just changing the angle. You know, you've got six bowlers up your up your sleeve. It's fantastic to have. And what about the fact that England went in with that just that one spinner? India went in with three. Now, you know, we had this. They de- always do. 
<laughs> and, but this is the thing, isn't it? We have this debate in test cricket as well. I mean, you, you go in with your strongest side, don't you? Is that, isn't that no. the point? Rather than picking a spinner for picking a spinner's sake? Well, I think what they've done, we've, we've talked many times in the test series about England got the selection wrong. Well, it looks like uh, on the wicket, what we saw, England got the selection spot on. Absolutely spot on. Yes, we'd like to see one of the batsmen, and if Joe Root played in this 11, he could be a batsman in the side that actually bowls a little bit. But unfortunately, they're not going for Joe Root at the minute. They're going for Milan, who's got a terrific record. And they got the selection this game spot on. I think we'll see in this series two spinners in the England team. But at this moment in time, first game, they got the selection bob on. Is the, um, you say that the, the, the point of this series for England, they are approaching this very much as we win this series. That's it. Yeah. After that, if they do, say they go 3 nil up, say whatever, say they've got one match at the end, do they tinker then? Um, do, they, do they go in with a couple of the, uh, the, the untried guys? Or do you think they already know their squad for the World T20? He, I mean, Owen Morgan is that kind of person. He, he, he doesn't mess around with his side. I mean, even when we was in, when we was in South Africa, Goffey, and um, we were thinking, oh, he's going to give, you know, someone a go or whatever. He was, nah, I'm, I'm playing my best side. He'll you know? rest himself. He'll rest himself, T. And, and yeah. Billings will come in for Morgan when they right. the series. That's what he'll do. But with the bowlers, he's like, no, no, I'm going to, this is the team. And the more they play, the more experience they get under pressure situations, the better they become. He... You know, I remember obviously, you know, in, in, in my time playing under Alex Stewart, he, like, he doesn't like giving away caps. He doesn't do it. You know, Goffey knows that better than anyone. He doesn't just give them away. You've got to earn the right. And at the moment, these guys have earned the right and it's for someone to try and take it from them. And what about Sam Curran's role in this side? Because we talked about um, the fact that Adil Rashid had never bowled the first over of an international T20. Well, Sam Curran's never been brought on to bowl an over as late as the ninth over. Uh, we've seen Sam Curran bowl in, in the first over through to the sixth. Never bowl. He was held back. And then when Hardik Panja came in, he was, he was dragged out again. I mean, that, does that show an embarrassment of riches from, a, from an English perspective that you can field a player like Sam and just bring him on, bowl him for two, and then whisk him out again? I think what that shows is a captain that adapts to the situation. I don't think that was the plan. Uh, you know, if, if Owen Morgan in his, in his notepad had... I don't think he believed or oh, he had Sam Caron down bowling the ninth over but a deal Rashid did he have a deal Rashid bowling the third over did he think at the start I'm going to nick one I'm going to try and nick an over here first over deal on surprise everyone get out get in the over get out four runs five runs brilliant right have a spell then we get Sam but he went so well and he thought and that's the, that's the ability of, of Owen Morgan but then you've got, to, you've got to still have belief in your players that they can execute in any, you know, you, you as a player going to the game, we spoke about role clarity and how important that is. But you can't then be a one-trick pony because if the game situation changes, you can't go, you know, Goffey, there would have been times where you've taken the new ball and it's like, right, Goffey's away swing is nice shape and uh, skip the ball's not swinging. You can't then just keep trying to bowl away swing. You've got to, find, you've got to go to plan B, plan C, plan D. But as a team, you need to do that as well. But once that plan does shift... Morgan's communication to his player right Sam you're coming in the ninth over but this is now your job this is the role I want you to perform this is what we're looking for you to do and then it's his ability and over to him as a player to be able to execute that I, I look at this England team and just going back to that point that you guys discussed about the change chopping and changing teams and everything else we've just watched the England test team and we watched an England test captain come back and go I want my best 11 please all the rotation and everything else that's gone on, you know, that cost England, having won the first test, yeah. and we don't, we've been over this, we don't need to go over it, but why then replicate that mistake in the one-day game? Owen Morgan is not going to make that mistake. He's not that guy. He's not that captain. He's going to say, I want my best 11, thank you, and if we're 3-0 up, I want to win 5-0. Yeah, we mentioned Michael Vaughan in the build-up to all this, Goffey. You know him well. He was of the opinion that Owen Morgan might have too much power. I bet, I bet you Joe Root would love to have a little bit more, more say, wouldn't he? Well, I said, I've, I've, I've been quite open. Um, I, if I'd have been Joe Root I'd, and I was captain of England, I would have been livid because in cricket, it's totally different to football. If the team doesn't deliver, the captain gets the sack. In football, the manager gets the sack. And we've seen with Owen, and, and rightly so, by the way, I'm not criticising Owen for this. He's got a game plan and he's been pretty strong on who he judges a good player to play in his team and selection. And Joe Rue must be absolutely gutted deep down, but he didn't get his best 11 in every single test match. Owen Morgan's got his best players available for this tour, and rightly so, but we should have had the best players available for the test series as well. 
Um, Tom Curran, turned 26 today. Happy birthday, mate. You're not playing. Uh, and he's played well for England, hasn't he? He's played throughout he's, the South Africa series. And actually, he was playing for Rajasthan Royals last year, just before uh, Stokesy, um, who had, had a leave of absence uh, for reasons that we know about. He came back into the side. I thought Tom Curran played really well in the IPL last year. Well, he'll be glad he got released because he's gone for three times the money to, uh, <laughs> to Delhi, hasn't he? So I, I think he's a fantastic cricketer. He's a great squad player, Tom Curran, and he will be part of the uh, World T20 uh, World Cup squad because he can bowl with a new ball. He's really good at the death. Uh, he mixes his up with lots of slower balls. And I'll tell you what, with a bat in hand, he can hit the ball out the ground. I think he's a fantastic cricketer. Getting in the starting 11 every single game, I don't think he will be that player. But as a squad player, what a terrific player to have, T. Yeah, he, he is, he is a, he's a good kid. And, uh, you know, sort of seeing when he was a, a young lad and he just wants to do it like you did it better than most. But bowling at the death, not everyone wants to put their hand up. Some people go hiding when the captain's looking round. He's like, give me the ball. And that's what Darren Goff was about. And, and Tom Curran's like that. And unfortunately, when you're bowling at the death, there's sometimes a batsman's going to catch you. And there was a few, I think it was a game in Durban where, um, I can't remember his name, but he, he got after him. And he, uh, uh, but it happens like that. And then in another game, he ends up going for 20 odd for four overs. And, and, but he never shies away from it. And as Darren says, his runs are valuable. You know, when he was playing for the Sixers in, in the Big Bash a couple seasons ago, he was, I think he came out tournament's best player. And as you rightly said, in the IPL last year, he did really well as well with the back, got a couple of 50s, didn't he? So, He's a good player to have. As Darren says, he's most probably not the first name on the 11, but to have in your squad, and if someone's not quite doing it to bring him in, phenomenal. Well, he well, can play with a new ball, open the ball in, right? He can do that job. Uh, similar to Sam, or he can come in the middle order, or he can just ball a couple of overs at the death. So he's, he's adaptable, and he fits into what we, Owen Morgan wants to play. And I think it's the same with Sam. If we look at that starting 11 there, and you're looking at what change could they possibly make if they make one, and it wouldn't weaken the team whatsoever, it'd be Moeen Ali for Sam Curran, wouldn't it? I mean, that's the clear and obvious change in there. But down the line there if he doesn't want to go for Archer and Wood in the same sides he puts Tom Curran in so that's his option there depending on the pitch but I think he got the selection spot on here for the faster bowlers there was a little bit in it it was a little bit uneven uh, too paced and when you've got bowlers of Archer and Wood's pace bowling at you on those pitches as mm. we saw they made it uncomfortable for India for at Kohli as we've all said when he got hit on the hand he looked shell-shocked Right, next ball he tried to hack one, and then the next ball he faced off uh, a deal. Uh, deal. He smashed it well, miss hit it to to mid off. So he, the pace in this game has done its job. Rashid was brilliant, but the pace has also done its job. Well, look, we've got uh, two days. It's a very quick turnaround. We are remaining in Ahmedabad. A 10 out of 10 performance is how Darren Goff described it, uh, Matt. Is there enough time for India to turn it around? Can, can England go back to back? I mean, the short turnaround helps which team the most, do you think? Well, I mean, there's two ways of looking at it. I, initially, you'd say, well, it helps England because they're on, they've got momentum. They, they will be wanting, chomping at the bits, just carry on going, carry on playing like they are. But in a funny way, for India, it doesn't give them enough time to think about it too much and, and, and look too deeply into things. I don't think Kohli would do that anyway. He's far too experienced for that. He's, he, he'll remain very logical. Um, and look, the reality about 2020 is anything can happen on any given day. Uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, England's uh, player of the match, uh, Joffre Archer, joins us on TalkSport 2. Joffre, well played today. How great was it uh, to, to be playing in, in front of a crowd like that? 70,000 uh, just about. And uh, to cap it off with a player of the match and three wickets. Well, we had pros in for the last two tests as well. And... To be honest, the numbers don't really matter, you know. As long as the code is in, they're going to be very vocal. So it's hard to tell how many people are here because, to be honest, the noise, the noise is the same as it's always been. Uh, I wonder if you can answer a question for us, Jofra. Uh, Adil Rashid bowled the first over today. Um, when was he told that he was going to be bowling the first over? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'd probably have to answer that, sure. By the skipper, all they knew is that I was the one in the first one, and yeah, I didn't really answer who was one in the first. Uh, it was a superb all-round performance uh, from the from the lads, uh, Joffre. You got on top really early. 
Um, how much of a benefit was it uh, that you had some players coming into the side that maybe hadn't played that much cricket in the last uh, couple of months? Um, again, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Even if the guys weren't playing cricket, they definitely would have been training hard or they probably would have been at tournaments as well before they came here. So, you know, uh, there's no doubt that everyone was doing as much as they had to to be ready for when this series started. Joffre, go for a year, mate. Well bowled, excellent performance, uh, as expected, with a white ball in hand. And you must be pretty impressed. Like I say, we just talked about um, the all-round performance from all the bowlers today. But I always enjoy watching you and Mark Wood <laughs> bowl together in the same team. It was excellent to watch. Goffey, sorry, you were just thinking happy birthday for TC, so it's really hard to hear you in the background. I've lost, I've lost the last 20 seconds of the question. Sorry, I would just say I always enjoy watching you and Mark Wood uh, ball in the same team together. It was excellent between you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do like Wood and Woody, you know. Um, obviously, we get to um, nudge each other on a little bit to ball a bit faster. Um, so, uh, nah, it's good ball and Woody. Joffre, we'll let you get back to the birthday celebrations. Uh, uh, thanks so much for joining yeah. us. Uh, I mean, I did I notice... Think, I, think I've missed, I think I've missed them and missed probably the cake already by now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 